say back in my day, not that old. Biggest thing that happened uh, to me from a coaching point of view? I've had loads, honestly, it's too many to name. You learned so much from them over the, over the years. Someone, someone like him as well had a, had a massive impact on, on my rugby journey. I think every coach you work with um, leaves uh, something that, that you gain knowledge. But I think if I have to single out one, it's probably Sean Everett, the head coach for the Sharks at the moment. He coached me at a under 20 and under 21 level. I think he's the coach that probably taught me the most about rugby than more than any of the others. So, um, and he's just an unbelievable human being. He told me, or oh, that's also lessons he taught us off the field um, that I carried forward in my career. So he's probably be the one. I think it's something I look to forward in my career is to coach, but especially more younger players uh, before going to seniors. I think at a younger age you can have a real effect on. Um, players or individuals' lives, not just on the field, but off the field as well, make an impact there. And that's something I would love to do. My, my school coach at the time, um, Dr. Graham Richards and, and Mark Patson, who helped me along to the school. Um, and those two were absolutely unbelievable. Graham for um, helping me understand what, what my game was based on, and that was work rate and being committed and throwing myself into anything and trying to be the most committed person on the pitch. And Mark Patterson, the way that um, he supported my family through schooling where um, it was a lot for, for, for my family really and helping with rugby tours and kit and all sorts of organisation around getting to Saints and, and all sorts. It's, it's just someone, someone like him as well had a, had a massive impact on, on my rugby journey. but. Um, I've been coached by so many great coaches, fortunately, and they've invested a lot of time in me. So to, to, to put it down to only two people is, um, is, is, is tough. But I think at that period in time, it was, I think that probably made the, the, the most difference of, along, with my, along with my parents and staying by, standing by me and helping, helping, to send me through, helping to send me through that schooling system, which um, wouldn't, wouldn't have seemed possible before, really. Okay. Different coaches over over different uh, periods of my career, I've had a huge influence. Like, um, um, Checker was was one of them. Um, him and David Knox coming to Leinster, um, you know, from a learning point of view, I learned so much from them over the, over the years. Then, you know, they Checker brought in Alan Gaffney, who I learned a lot from, and then Joe Schmidt came in. And Joe probably had the, the biggest influence on me because I spent the longest time with him, like seven, eight years together with Leinster in Ireland. And, and then just as you think, you, you, you You've, you've taken in all that you can. Stuart Lancaster, Andy Farrell come in and, and again, challenge you in different ways. Um, so I've had so many, you know, coaches over the years um, that have pointed me in one direction. Like Dave Aldred is another one that I've worked with personally, not in a team environment, but by myself. That has had a huge influence on on how I prepare and, and how I practice. And um, yeah, so they'd be the, the biggest ones. I'd probably say, coaching-wise, big one for me was probably playing uh, rugby at Colts. I was fortunate we had, a, we had a really good team there. Um, you know, our coach was one of those coaches who was very much like pushed for staying at your club and, and playing week in, week out and enjoying it. And then probably going on to university as well in terms of, you know, getting in uh, your strength and conditioning and also playing, you know, twice a week back then. We would done Wednesday and Saturday, so I think the, the two coaches there at, at club and at university just ensuring that playing was on the forefront of their minds and getting out and getting on the pitch. Uh, that was definitely the biggest thing for me in terms of development as a player. A lot, a lot of lads now tend to get picked up by academies. I, I don't know if it's the same now, but it used to be, say back in my day, not that old. Um, but it, it used to be like if you were involved in an academy then, you were like limited in terms of if you were allowed to play at the weekend and, and things like that. So I think, you know, getting out there with your mate is, is a key part of it. Well, my school's coach, uh, Chris McCary, was definitely one who who I, I felt like w w I was able to probably express myself really well under and, and, and through school's rugby was probably my, my entrance into, into professional rugby. So that was probably pretty influential. Um, um, there's been a there's been a few on route on route. Um, I really enjoyed working with with Neil Doak as well. Um, Doki's son's now actually playing with Ulster, so it, it's it's good to have worked with a, a father son combo. Um, but uh, he was he was good. He coached me when I was playing. Actually, played rugby at Queen's, sorry, Queen's University. I left Emily 
after after I uh, after I left school too, and he coached me at Queens and also up at Ulster here. Uh, Dan McFarland, when when Dan took over here at Glasgow, uh, I think Dan was probably the the, the biggest thing that happened uh, to me from a coaching point of view. Um, you know, his detail was excellent, but also his support was excellent as well. Um, you know, he was. He was never afraid to tell you straight, but you know you, you knew that where it came from was a was a place of support and a will on his part for you to do well. Because whenever you did well, it reflected well on him. You know, it was a, it was a shared success. Um, so I, I loved my time with Dan. I thought he was brilliant. Um, Lashley as well. Um, you know, with with Jason O'Halloran, um, sort of John DL uh, and Dave Rennie here at Glasgow as well. Uh, they were excellent. Just adding something different to my game. So to Dave. Obviously, with his background in New Zealand, the Chiefs brought something completely different to all of us here. Um, you know, and I think it was a good learning for Dave as well because he certainly learned a lot from the first year he was here and the second year in terms of how Northern Hemisphere rugby is different from Southern Hemisphere. But for my own game, um, for your effectiveness around the pitch and your dynamism, I, I think he taught me a lot as well. So there's a few coaches, but certainly those two stick to stick out when when I come to thinking about um, sort of my path through my career. No one's really had like a, a touch on my career because I think it's always just been instilled in me. But I've had some brilliant coaches, age grade, like John Fletcher, done the pathway stuff, Peter Walton, so many. I could sit here all day, you know, Adam Martinovic, Steve Wolf, it's incredible. Eddie's been great for me. I've had loads, honestly, too many to name. There's a couple of coaches who had a huge impact. Um, when I was sort of 11 to 13, there was a coach called Richard Mitchell, he's now a headmaster, who, at such a young age, he just got me to look at the game a bit differently, just asked a few questions of me, probing questions, um, of which I still ask the academy guys at the club now who are 19. When I got to um, 16 to 18, there was uh, quite a legendary coach in, in Dossa Smith, Ian Smith, uh, who was a Leicester coach, Leicester player, I did England on 21s, um, who just got me to understand about sort of preparation and a bit more about professionalism, um, really. Even though you're a school kid, you just got me to think a little bit, you know, ahead of that and you know, not make exactly the same decisions as everyone else my age because I was looking to go to another level, really. And so my decision making had to be sharper and better. And, um, you know, you get so many messages on like, Instagram and stuff from like, young academy kids that say, I want give me a diet plan and X, Y, and Z. And you're like, mate, I eat sugar puffs three times a day. You don't want the diet plan. Um, but they, they all want so much help, which is class, because you, you didn't really see that back in the day. Everyone was quite timid in the academy and real shy, and now you see bigger characters. So I think, mate, if someone comes and asks me for help, like James Whitcomb, for example, mate, he, he'd tell you himself he won a great scrummager two years ago, but now he's fantastic, like he's doing so well. And for me to see that and his, the fruits of his labor coming up, like, it's, it's so good. I, I, he enjoys scrummaging now, whereas before he was quite similar to me when I was his age, getting dished up. So it's nice to see. I'll help anyone out if they ask.